Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, this is after MSP Geekon. It's a little exciting. Um, I just honestly, I'm a little blown away with how it went. Um, MSP Geekon, we had around 380 total people. Uh, we had amazing sessions and we got so much feedback from everyone there regarding how awesome it was. Um, for myself being at the conference, like I, <laughs> it was such a surreal experience for me to be there, partake in the conference. And then also know, like, this is a conference that MSP geeks through. Like, this is something that I was a part of. It was just mind blowing. One of the, uh, themes that we had, or probably like the main theme, I guess we can say for MSP GeekCon is the never ending path of learning. The infinity sign that we get on there is the path that we traverse. When we start learning, we start learning how much we don't know, and then we start learning more, and then we start realizing how much we don't know, and it's just a never-ending cycle of always learning. And so to continue that, I want to start a series, I guess, of videos that focuses on the topics that we had for the conference um, and see if I can expand on that. Um, there are, there are recordings of the sessions that are coming out. Uh, there will be recordings going on the MSP Geek YouTube channel, uh, which is uh, linked in my YouTube channel. Um, and so you'll get to see what they are all about. I'm going to summarize. Um, I'm going to summarize the concepts of what was discussed, but, and then expand on it and, and to try to uh, maybe give you some additional perspectives to think about for each of the sessions. Um, so in this video, uh, we're going to talk about the, um, the first session that happened. And we're going to skip the keynote uh, for right now. Community, which is really what the keynote was all about, is about community. It is an integral, essential piece. Um, but we'll come back to it, because it, it ties up at the end as well as at the beginning. Um, so the first session that we talked about was Kelvin. Uh, and I, I'll try to say his name now correctly since he's finally taught us how to say it. <laughs> um, Kelvin Dachlar um, was, uh, was the one who gave the session for Beginner's Mind. And the name of the session wasn't called Beginner's Mind. It was, it was, finding the path of learning, um, uh, how to adopt a learning mindset was the concept. And, and so what he talked about was if you walk into a situation, essentially thinking that you already know everything, then you're not going to find anything else to learn. And so he gave the example of someone who's been at a company like a, a team leader or a tech escalation point, or even a manager or even non-tech related, just someone who's been at a company for a long time and that has always done things a certain way. Um, and so in that situation, they're basically have adopted or gotten used to the idea or the habit that they know what to do, they know how to do it. And therefore they've always, it's always been done this way and they'll just keep doing it that way. Um, and in that situation, it doesn't leave much room for improvement. In fact, it doesn't leave any room for improvement because you already know the way to do it and you're doing it and that's it. Whereas if you were to approach the situation, every time you were to run through a process, you would ask yourself the question, is this the best way to do it? And if you literally, if you not literally, but actually run through that question as you go through the process, okay, now I need to open this file and grab this data. Is this the best way to do it? Maybe there's a better way to do it. I don't know. Let's see, where would there be a better way to do it? Well, I need this data. The data is only available here. I guess this is the best way to do it. And you keep running that through your, your brain or your mind or your head. <laughs> As you go through the process, each step, is this the best way to do it? Then it puts you in a new mindset where you're always looking for something new. Whereas if you're not asking that question, you don't even know there's something new that could be or better that could be done and you're just not moving forward. An example of where uh, something may be better with that you may want to come up with something. So let's say the first time you run through a process, let's say there's a very basic process. You have to open up a file 
let's say that file is, we'll call it file A. You have to take data from file A, and then you have to take data from file B, compare the two together, and then create a new file called file C. That's a very basic process. You have to open up one file, compare it to another file, and then make an, a brand new file out of those two comparisons, right? Now, the first time you're doing that process, you've never, you've never done it before, it's brand new to you, and so you just do it. You don't know if there's a better way, you don't know if there's any way, this is what you know because that's what you've been taught and this is the first time you're doing it. So you run through it. Now, the second time you do it, you ask yourself, is there a better way to do this? And then you start thinking, well, I know that I'm pulling data from file B as well as file A. I also know that the data I'm looking for in file A is also located in file B, just in a different property. Or just, it's like, it's right there. Or it's right, like if there's a, if, if the data, without getting too far into the weeds of the specific process that I'm talking about to make it make sense. If you, once you know the process you've run through one time, you have the ability to look for shortcuts. And so, because you now know what you're looking for, asking the question, is there a better way of doing this, allows you to come up with an answer that you may not have had if it was the first time you're doing it. And in reality, what the beginner's mindset is gonna do for you is it's gonna give you a way to iteratively improve on what's going on. And so each time you're doing something, you look at it as if it's fresh for the first time using the experience that you've had in the past to help you inform the question of, is there a better way of doing it? And that is the core concept of what, or not, not the whole concept, but that is a, a large part of what beginner's mind really is. Now, how does this actually apply? So in Kelvin's uh, session, one of the examples that he gave you is that if an intern comes up to you or a brand new team member comes up to you and says, hey, I found a new program, a new tool, a new way of doing this, it's better. Most people, their initial reaction is going to be, nope, sorry, uh, it, it's, I, don't, I don't have time for that right now. They're not even going to listen. They're not even going to think about it. They're just going to automatically assume I'm not new, you're new, and therefore you don't know what you're talking about. And therefore, there's no way you could have potentially come up with something that's better because you don't even understand what's going on and so on and so forth. But if you're dismissing what they're coming up with out of the blue without even considering it first, then you're missing out on really good ideas and you're also creating an atmosphere, an environment or a culture of uh, disrespect almost, but non-innovation, um, stag stagnating. So you're discouraging creative thinking, which is really bad. Um, and that's what primarily what the session was all about. Now, if we can expand this by applying that same concept to actual problem solving. So I'm a, I'm a technician. Like my, my core skill, responsibility, the thing that I've been doing for the last 13 years is solving problems. This is what I've been doing. The way you solve problems is by looking at the problem and identifying what the problem is really about. One of the questions that came up at the session that we had was whether or not, like, how do you identify the different tiers? Like, what's your definition of a tier one versus tier two versus tier three? And there are a bunch of different consensus, a uh, bunch of different answers around what it is without a real consensus, except for a few groups of people who did something similar. The definition that I'm, I proposed and that I want to see if we can start advocating is a tier one technician will fix something until they can't, and then they escalate. A tier two technician will figure it out as opposed to doing something based off of what they know. A tier one technician will have knowledge that they know, things that they've learned, and will fix it based off of what they, uh, based off of that. If they don't know it, they escalate it. A tier two technician will figure it out and will work towards solving the problem in the moment. A tier three technician, when it gets escalated by a tier two, if it's a more complex problem, it's a bigger picture issue, it's a infrastructure problem and so on and so forth. A tier three technician will look at the problem and work on it from a holistic point of view. Um, we had some conversation about this afterwards. And one of the examples that we gave was 
a client comes in and says, hey, I have a brand new user. Um, I need a new user created. That goes to tier one. Why? Because it's something they know how to do. Now, the user can't get created because of a failure that occurs. What happens? Tier one goes to tier two. Hey, my user's not creating. I need help. And so tier two looks at the problem, identifies that there's, let's say, a domain replication issue causing a user to be create, like a user creation to fail, and therefore fixes the domain replication issue, and therefore allows the user to get created. That's tier two. Now, uh, tier three comes along in that situation and goes, well, why do you even have a domain at this point? Right? All of your stuff is basically on Microsoft 365 or on Google or whatever. You're mostly cloud anyways. Domain is legacy. It's not really important. There's nothing there that's required at this point. Let's just migrate you, all your users, to cloud-only accounts and throw away the domain. Um, another example would be where a user, a client comes in and says, I have a new user. They, uh, they want created. And so they make a ticket for a new user. When the tier one completes the ticket, you're done. Now the client comes back and says, well, we need 300 users created. And so tier one will either try to script it or because they don't know how to script it, learn how to script it, which makes them a tier two. Or the ticket goes to tier two for projects to create a script one time to create 300 users. Now let's say the client comes back every week says, hey, I have five new users. I have 10 new users. I have 20 new users. Now I have 10 new users. Now I have one new user. And every week they have got a new set of users to create. Tier three is going to come in and say, well, we're going to automate this. Here's a form you fill in. The form is going to trigger a script. The script will create the user automatically. And now the entire process has been offloaded from the help desk and from the MSP onto the, onto the client. And now it's HR's responsibility to create the users using this form that was created by tier three. And so that's the real difference between tier one, tier two, tier three in my mind. Tier one will do something that they know how to do and then they escalate. Tier two will figure out what it is they need to do. And tier three does it from a holistic point of view, from a, from a solving the problem or a bigger picture point of view. Um, so with that in mind, I don't remember how this relates to what I was talking about beforehand. Um, beginner's mind, problem solving, right? So one of the things that I was always doing was problem solving. And I was doing it as a tier three technician, essentially in those definitions. And so the thing is, is that if I come, if I approach a problem and start, let's say I get a problem, oh, user can't log in. I say, well, I've seen users who can't log in before. It's always a bad password or always, it's always caps lock or something like that. And so let's say I assume it's always a bad password. Then as a technician troubleshooting, if I'm thinking about it, if I'm following the troubleshooting steps to resolve an issue based off my knowledge, what I'm going to be doing is resetting the password first, which has the potential to cause other issues. Well, where is the account linked to? Where else is that password used? How many other problems am I going to cause by resetting that password? Now, all of the phones stop working or something else occurred, right? Let's say it was a shared account, which you're not supposed to have. Let's say there's a staff shared account on a generic location, like a nurse account. And now I've reset the nurse account password. And now I keep getting phone calls every day for a different nurse who used to know the password. And now they don't. And so there's potential issues that can occur. Now, if I were to approach the problem from a beginner's mindset and say, well, I understand that there's five or six different scenarios it could happen, it could cause the password to not work or a user to fail to log in, right? But those are the five or six that I know. And in reality, what we'll end up finding out is that there's, there's an actual potential for unlimited possibilities. You really don't know what that is. And there's no way you could have run into every single one of them. And so instead of focusing on the issue being described, comparing to symptoms that we know from experience, what we want to do is we want to start over every time. User can't log in. OK, you can't log in. Let me help you. What does that mean? What is the error message every single time? I want to know what that error message is. I could be resetting your password. I could be breaking a bunch of stuff. 
for one thing because of a computer's domain trust is broken. It could be you're putting in the wrong username. I don't know until I ask. And so with beginner's mind, the idea is, is that you put aside all preconceived notions. You put aside any kind of previously obtained knowledge. It's not the time to apply knowledge at this point. It's the time to gather data. And if you're gathering data with an idea of what that data you're gonna be gathering is gonna look like ahead of time, you actually taint that data with bias. And so we need to put all that aside and we need to start from scratch every time. What's going on? What are you trying to do? And what's happening? What is your outcome? What is your goal? What's the difference between those two? And we collect that data. And that is the concept of the beginner's mind. It applies in so many ways. It applies, like Kevin was talking about, the ego that you have. If you, have, if you think you already know it all, then you're never gonna learn. It applies to learning itself in the same exact way. If you're reading something and you're like, oh, I read this, read this, read this, right? This is what skimming is called. And you don't actually end up taking in anything that you're reading. I already know all the stuff, boom. Now you've missed like two or three key sentences or paragraphs that are required. that will teach you something new. Um, just one last thing about this and I'll, I'll wrap it up just to explain or, or provide an additional perspective around the idea of beginner's mind and what it can cause. There's a thing that's been going around in the NOC and SOC world, anyone that's doing uh, some kind of monitoring or responding to alerts that they call called the alert fatigue, right? There's a similar concept. Well, the concept of alert fatigue just quickly is that because I'm getting flooded with alerts, therefore I'm not gonna look at any of them. I'm getting, now they all look the same and therefore I'm missing stuff. That's the idea of alert fatigue. The same exact concept applies even outside of IT in general life if you have a checklist of things to do, oh, I have so much to do today, I'm not gonna get any of them done. And it just keeps building and building and building and building. You're experiencing something that I don't think anyone's ever called this before, checklist fatigue, but it's the same exact idea. And so you have a overwhelming number of items to look at. And so you're not looking at any of them because either you already know what they all are or because there's too much to look at or because of any one of those reasons, there's more, there's always more, it's always an unlimited number of possibilities. So I'm not thinking of all of them, but because of that, your brain is just skimming or skipping and it's not looking and you're not actually taking in what has to happen. There's one more aspect of that. And that is um, when you're driving. And so they, they train you on on what signs look like. Every sign looks different. Every type of sign looks different, different color, different shape, different standards, different types. The reason why they use different colors and different shapes is because if every sign was exactly the same, you wouldn't know what they said. Nobody reads the signs, right? You see a sign that tells you how many miles away your destination is. What do you do? You find the destination you're looking for and you see the number, right? You see a yield sign. Are you reading that yield sign? Are you reading that stop sign? Nobody's reading those signs. You're glancing over it, taking in the shape and color and moving on. If they were all at the same, you would be experiencing sign fatigue <laughs> and you would not really know what was happening. Most people who are following GPS and it's just talking to them, they're not even reading the signs. They don't even care. And they just see, yep, sign, sign, sign. What did it say? Who knows? What street are you on? Who knows? It's a street sign. I see them everywhere, right? And so with beginner's mind, it keeps you aware. It keeps you in the moment so that if you were to approach every sign, oh, new sign, what does that say? Oh, Baltimore, 10 miles. Yes, that's where I need to go, right? As you pass the street signs, you read them. Every sign is new. Everything that you're experiencing is new. You're being in the moment and don't get lost in the clutter. And so the same thing applies to your checklist. I mentioned having too much items in your checklist. If every item was new every time, if the checklist you're looking at was new every single time, your review, that's the one that's most important. I'm gonna go do that right now. And then you knock it off and you do it again. Oh, here's the next most important one. Knock it off and keep going. And that is how a beginner's mind can literally change your life. It is such an important topic because the idea of you falling out of the moment and just succumbing to the noise that exists means that you're not paying attention, you don't know what's happening, 
and oops, you've clicked on a phishing link and now you've lost your credentials to a hacker. And so this is how far reaching this topic is and why it's so important. Anyways, I went on for a really long time, much longer than I wanted to, than I meant to. Um, leave your comments below. I will be doing different videos on each of the sessions and they will all sort of be in this format more or less. Thanks for watching.